in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, fellow Rams. You're watching Ram Life Entertainment. We're enriching the Fort Collins and Ram experience one show at a time. I'm your host, Gabe Pokras. We have a great show planned for you tonight. Pandas and People will be performing live later on. For now, let's get started on the latest entertainment news. We're all excited for the Super Bowl on Sunday. Coldplay is, perform is performing for the halftime show. And word is that Beyonce will make a special appearance during the halftime show. If that wasn't enough to get you pumped for the big game, Lady Gaga will be singing the national anthem. 2016 is shaping up to be a big year for Gaga. Just a few weeks ago, she won a Golden Globe for her performance as the Countess on American Horror Story. She's nominated for a Grammy and will be performing a David Bowie tribute during the award show. She's also nominated for an Oscar in the Best Original Song category. And to top it all off, she's releasing a new album this year. Lady Gaga has noticeable pulled back on her outlandish looks, which were prevalent early in her career. From seeing Gaga's past performances, I would expect her to make a jetpack entrance in a football-inspired dress for the big game. That would be in true Gaga fashion. But that's probably not going to happen, and she probably has no idea how to operate a jetpack. But she might. I don't know. We will just have to find out and wait on Sunday. All right, Miley Cyrus has been added as a mentor for the 10th season of The Voice. Sure, she's a little wild at times, and her tongue is trying to escape from her mouth most of the day, but I think she'll bring something unique to the show. NBC Entertainment President Paul Talegi told CNC, quote, when Miley speaks, everyone pays attention. Our artists are very lucky to have the benefit of her instincts and wisdom. Wisdom. Uh, whatever you say, Paul. Catch Miley Cyrus basking in her wisdom when The Voice Season 10 premieres February 29th on NBC. Rihanna's back with a new album, just released last week. Anti, oh, excuse me, Anti is on the way for debuting at the number one of the Billboard 200 chart. That would make it the second album from Rihanna to reach number one. Her 2012 album, Unapologetic reached the top spot after selling 238,000 copies. You go, Riri. All right, that's the time we have for you on our movie news, but on our music news, excuse me, but we're gonna jump this over to our film expert, Marco. He has the latest talk from the film industry. What are the big stories this week, Marco? Let's get started. Five new pictures from the new Ghostbusters movie has been released, have been released, giving us another look at all four leading ladies in pre-jumpsuit. And we get our first look at the team secretary, Kevin, who will be played by Chris Hemsworth. In addition to the pictures, director Paul Feig has tweeted that the first trailer will be released sometime later this month. Ghostbusters stars Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, and Melissa McCarthy, and is set to hit theaters July 16th. Lionsgate has announced that they are developing a new MacGyver movie as part of a deal with CBS. The deal also includes CBS developing a new MacGyver TV show at the same time. The original MacGyver lasted seven seasons and has two made-for-TV movies. Avatar 2 and Wolverine 3 have both been slated to start shooting sometime in April. Hugh Jackman's last outing as Wolverine will be released in March 2017, and Avatar 2 still has no release date after being pushed back into 2017. <clears throat> Elizabeth Banks has been cast in the upcoming Power Rangers movie as the main villain, Rita Repulsa. Banks is coming off a great 2015 with her final portrayal of Effie Trinket in the Hunger Games series and her directorial debut in Power Pitch Perfect 2. Power Rangers is set to come out March 24th next year. For movies coming out in theaters this month, we have the new Coen Brothers film, Hail Caesar, coming out today. Next week is Valentine's Day, so after you hit up your local Olive Garden, you can treat someone special by taking them to see Deadpool, <laughs> Zoolander 2, and How to Be Single. <laughs> Later on in this month, we have the aptly titled Race, just in time for Black History Month, as well as Gods of Egypt, Triple Nine, and Eddie the Eagle. That's it for <laughs> Movies with Marco. Thanks, Marco. Now it's time for this week's Strange News. Strange News. Strange News. A group of friends have created a new website called Frink, 
Frink, it's hard to say, Frinkiak. Type in any quote from The Simpsons and it automatically finds screenshots of when the quote was said in the show. This is a great tool for fans who spend all day making Simpsons memes, like our producer. I do it sometimes, I tried it out myself, and it is extremely accurate actually. It's actually pretty impressive. All right, moving on. I typed in butter up that bacon and it worked plenty of screenshots were display that show Homer forcing his soon to clog, forcing his soon to clog arteries with butter. It's pretty classic Simpsons. All right, and speaking of delicious butter, Burger King is adding a new limited time item to their menu, the extra long buttery cheeseburger. Cove Red in Buttery Garlic Sauce. You can buy two of these bad boys for only five bucks and a heart transplant. The only downside, they are 710 calories each. I'm not too worried about that. I eat that many calories and snacks right before bed. Burger King franchise Jack in the Box released similar menu items last year, so it seems that the buttery burger wars are starting to heat up. What a time to be alive. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure that's another Simpsons quote, and I knew it. Look at these. That's exactly what a time to be alive. All right, that's all the time we have for the strange news segment this week. We're going to be moving on. Fort Collins is known for its beer culture. Any beer you can think of, you can find it somewhere in town, and it's awesome. The mayor of Old Town is a great place to go if you're looking to try some new imported beers. In this week's Beer Me, sponsored by the mayor of Old Town, I tried an imported brew with a unique story behind it. Take a look. Hey guys, and welcome to the first edition of Beer Me at the Mayor. They have a hundred beers on tap and they're constantly switching them out, so I figured this would be the perfect place to do some beer reviews. So the beer we're spotlighting today is called Apt 12, A-B-T 12. The brewing company is St. Bernardus, and it started in 1945 and they're coming out of Belgium. So it is a Belgian style beer, which means you're gonna have a lot of banana flavors to it. Uh, this one is a quadruple, so it's gonna have a much darker taste and it's gonna be more of a brown ale taste than, than what you would expect from like a single Belgium uh, style beer. The other cool, unique thing about this beer and this brewing company is that is a Trappist brewery, meaning that it was brewed by monks. And there's only 11 of those breweries in the world, so that is extremely rare, and that is extremely cool that the mayor has it. At first, I didn't get too much uh, fruity flavor from it, but after continuously drinking it a little more, I started to detect a little bit more of the fruitiness, meaning the plum and the raisin. At first, it started tasting just a little bitter to me. I think that is a really good compliment for the beer to uh, warm up to you as you drink it, and the more you drink it, the better it gets. And then from there, uh, the less you'll start to taste the alcohol to a certain point. I would give this beer a 7.3 out of 10. I'd say the 10.5% helped it, boosted it up a little bit. It was very smooth. The brown ale with the plum actually complemented very well. But overall, I'm not a huge plum fan, so 7.3 out of 10. Stay tuned for those because you can expect a new Beer Me segment during every new Ram Life Entertainment. All right, now as college students, we are trying to find fun activities to do, but some things just cost too much. If you happen to have some loose change around and love video games, you may want to check out the recently opened All That in a Bag of Chips, end quote, that's the name. Entertainment reporters Casey Robinson and Andrew Balch talk to the owners of the new video game Paradise. Take a look. Yeah, my name is uh, Austin Almquist, and Joy and I are business partners here at All That in a Bag of Chips. Yeah, so at All That in a Bag of Chips, for $5, you get all day gameplay. Come and go as you please. Bring in the outside food if you would like. We don't mind that. And so you get to play any game you want, set up on a new system, meet new friends, see a new game, jump around, and we're open till 2 a.m. every day, so you get to hang out and 
keep off the streets and really enjoy what video games have to offer and friendships have to offer. I mean, it's it seems like it's just needed in society. Um, you know, there's plenty of other places where you can go and play sports and skateboard and you know, everyone seems to have their own place where they can go. But for video games, there's never really been a place where you can go where it was about you playing video games all day. It was more about someone making money off of you playing video games for an hour. And it's, it's not really about that. We've come to realize that, you know, we can sell friendships and help bring people back together in an age where it's easy to hide behind your keyboard and, you know, not find people and friends that are like-minded. I mean, if you're a star football player or basketball player, sure, you got tons of friends through high school and college. But if you don't and you like your video games, where are you going to find anybody? How are you going to, how are you going to link up? So we really feel like we're bringing that community together and, and giving them an opportunity to find friendship.